I saw a documentary called Erasing David and in that he tried to track down who had information on him how much information they had on him and what information they had on him then he hired some private investigators to try and find him and, and attempted to be unfindable is that a word? for one month he didn't last a month but anyway that's sort of the opposite of what I do, in a way. I keep daily records of what I eat, how much I weigh, what I look like, and um, a couple of other things. But I'm not the only person who keeps documentation of as aspects of their existence. For instance, Miss Gally Holmes keeps her tea bags. More than 32,000 from 11 years. Dried and dated. As for photography, everyday sort of portrait takers include Jonathan Keller and Noah Kalina. And Brian Lewis Saunders, who I mainly mention because of the interesting line on his website which reads, like fingerprints, snowflakes and DNA, they're all different. No two are the same. Which is true. One might not notice the difference between each photo or something, but if you take two photos from each other, the projects or something like that, you can notice that there's a definitely a difference, but it is gradual. For instance, Carl Baden's. Baden or Baden? Carl Baden's other pictures are on his blog in grids of 35, which is 7 by 5. But I don't know why he chose 35 specifically. Objects, I think, would probably be harder for storing than photos, which even if not digital would still be flat. However, I still keep the medicine boxes since I was run over. Because they are so personal, and I haven't had a haircut since before then either. Although not everything about this obsessive movement is personal. There are many personal reasons why you might do it, or someone might do it. Proof of existence. Memories. Sociological. Just something to do. Documentation. Sentimentality. Want. Obsession. Ritual. Art. Questioning personal aspects. Today I went to the hospital and I had some blood taken but unlike Judy Clark I probably won't keep the plaster